version of Sean and Sean in the morning. <laughs> but anyway, uh, just wait for them to get their Bibles and, and get up here. And while we were singing that song, I'll wait on you, Lord. I was thinking about uh, being so thankful in my high school days. I had something a lot of people never experienced. And that is a wonderful support group. In my high school days, I had family, my personal family, plus a church family, who was my support group. And if it wasn't for that, young people, I would have uh, been a, just felt like a lost soul. I had to make a trip the summer I graduated from high school to still see if I had my girlfriend. And I, if I do anything about love, I, I loved her. I, I was willing to spend the rest of my life with her and treat her like a queen. But then, that day when I went to see her before I left for the day, she didn't introduce me to her boyfriend. So I thought that was a pretty clear message that I was no longer her guy. And uh, I think I felt lost for a while. I, I don't know how my life would have gone. I really don't. I might have been a rascal. <coughs> but thanking God for my family. We was uh, in a Southern Gospel Quartet and cut albums and for a while and sang on TV in two or three states. And, uh, so that kept me going at a real early age. So that's what I'm talking about, my support group. But uh, young ladies, you young guys out there watching us, if there's any young guys watching us, let me tell you, you may think life is passing you by when you're just a real young person, but uh, I want you to know that's almost a laugher because life is not passing you by. God has his path and his will already uh, laid out for you. It's for you to find it and love God and follow his voice, follow God's leading. I feel God right now. I feel his presence. Mighty spirit in our midst this morning. I guess you guys look at me funny. Should you ready to go? Oh, okay, Sean. Oh, it's not the Sean and Sean in the morning. It's just one of the shops in the morning. <laughs> Like uh, 
I, we weren't able to watch the girls in real time this week, but you can watch them on their Consider the Lilies anytime you want. You can go back to it, especially if it resonates with you. Rewatch that. That's what's great. Okay. Well, this morning, I want to talk to you about how to ruin your life. And I'm going to reprise it with how we can really do a good job and ruin our futures. Okay? So, Bear with me with some tongue in cheek because I like having fun with this. But I, I want to, it's so easy now that you're going to flip gears because I'm going to be the other persona. I would normally come up here and give you everything from God's Word that tells you exactly what to do to try to help yourself. But guys, I want to flip gears. I want to shift. And I want to be the person that says, no, why would you follow this thing? Because the, the changes, you know, they always say anytime you start a, a discussion or a speech, you should have a premise. Well, my premise this morning is how to ruin things, how to completely make a mess of everything in front of you. So I want to help those folks out. I feel like maybe my, it's my diligence or my, uh, my calling. I want to help those people. If you want to ruin your life, I'm going to help you out this morning. I'm going to give you all the tools you need to do it well. Because if anything, I love, I love my granddad. I may quote scripture. Don't take that to heart because I'm quoting scripture that might help you out. You might want to listen to the opposite side because if you want to mess it up, don't follow the work. But I would like that says whatever you find, do with your, do with your mind. I love that. And we're going to talk about ways maybe you shouldn't. Maybe you should just do it half-heartedly. Everything you do, just make a mess of it. So how to ruin your life. So I'm going to give you a few just bullets and then I'm going to get into God's word. Because it probably has some real keys for life. But we want to talk about it. Well, you might not want to follow it if you try to ruin your life. Okay? Being here is one of them. Now, granted, being here physically is, would probably help you. And being on virtually, if you're watching this, I don't know if you should. Because you might get some instruction out of it. Now, I actually keep watching. Because, again, I'm going to help you not ruin it. So you're going to want to pay attention to these things. So let's give you some bullets first. Because I just I feel like I want to set the groundwork of what we're talking about. So, for instance, you know, some easy things. Settling for less. You know, in life, people say, you know, we should have a higher expectation. I just brought that message last week about having an expectation for people to do better. But if you're trying to ruin your life, settle for less. Just be okay with mediocre status quo. Why push for something that might be more excellent and better for you? No way. And along the same lines, be around people that think the same way. You know, it breathes off itself, right? So if you want to ruin things, hang out with people that also don't want much out of life. You'll all foster it together, and you'll just wallow in this misery together, and you'll none of you will accomplish anything great. I mean, it's going to be one of the, I mean, if you're looking for misery, this is going to do it. You're going to get the most out of it. Um, here's another one. Never learn how to manage your money. You want to be miserable? What is one of the biggest reasons for divorce in this country? Money. Money management. So you want to be miserable? Mess up your finances. Blow it. We just talked about blessings and how sometimes you want to delay things. We recognize that sometimes when you buy stuff, you find out later, oh, that wasn't what it was cracked up to me after you bought it, right? But you want to be miserable? Buy it all. Buy it on credit. Rack it up. Get that debt so high that your paycheck just goes right out the window, you will be miserable, I guarantee you. So that's one that's good. Cool. Run yeah, that help. I sh here's some amens on this this morning. I should we should be playing that gloom and spirit agony on me song in the background. Yeah, that'll help you get the mood going, right? Run away. Run away from your problems. You want to be miserable? Run away. Don't stop and stand firm. The Bible talks about when you've done all stand. But that's like you're going to try to make things better. You're not trying to make things better if you want to be miserable. You want to just run. Every chance you get, don't try to fix anything. Run away. How about this? I kind of mentioned this, but get way too attached to people that are dragging you down. Put that uh, rotten attitude, boyfriend, girlfriend, other person, relative, that every time they call, you're like, oh, and it's just like you feel like I have to come out of depression if you talk to them. Get more of them. You will be so miserable, you will never see up. And you just want more of those, more of that influence. Here they are again, calling me. If you want to be miserable, you want more of that. Okay. And I'm going to revisit this one, but I'm just going to touch on it. Forgiveness. 
You want to be miserable? Don't forgive him anymore. Why would you forgive someone? You might get some peace and credit. You want to hang on to those grudges. That gnawing in the pit of your stomach, that will make you miserable for months. So, how about this? Care what others think about you. Oh, most definitely. Compare yourself amongst yourselves. Honestly, think about, you know, what is everybody thinking about me? What have I done? What am I going to do, not going to do? If you really care about what people think, it will make you miserable. You'll be worried about it all the time. That's another one. Worry more. You want to be miserable? Worry all the time. Everything that comes up, dwell on it, meditate it until you are so miserable, you just want to go to sleep or shut out. I'll guarantee you, you'll have tons of miserable nights if you do that. Just worry all the time. Uh, live a lie. How about that? Sometimes being truthful might add integrity or other things about walking up rightly the Bible talks about. But if you want to be miserable, live a lie. Be fake. You ever been around somebody that's fake? You live it all the time, I guarantee you'll be angry, you'll be miserable inside. It'll just feel like you're never yourself. But again, if you're trying to be miserable, these are some things that can really help you. Now how about this? Ignore your health. You're, you're having issues, we're just going to pretend like it's not there. Because you know what? Later, it'll all come back to bite us, and then think how much misery you're living with that. Um, don't trust your intuition. We would call it your conscience for referring to things from the Bible, but your conscience trying to be your guide, not just Jimmy Cricket. Ignore all that. Don't go down, you know, you ever see, go watch a TV show, and you're watching a lady walk into the dark parking garage, and you're like, and here comes the bad guy, you're like, hello, I can see that coming. I can see the guy walking up. Why did you walk down? But if you want to be miserable, do that kind of stuff. Walk down dark alleys at night and just expecting the worst because what? It'll probably happen. And this is my favorite. I don't know if people like to use this term as much anymore, but I love this term. Instead of being the Bible, like the, our new Bible scriptures, let your lights shine before men, so they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Well, that means like you're being a light. You want to be visible? Throw shade all the time. Just throw it. Everywhere you're at, you ever been in a conversation with everybody's talking and then someone says, well, that's not going to work out. And boom, just what blank on the whole conversation? You want to be visible? Let that person be you. Be the throw, the shade thrower. And if you can throw shade, people will, they'll, they'll run from you. They won't want to be with you. And as a result, you'll be the there was a Saturday Night Live skill. This wasn't their person. Every time they talk, I can't remember the name of the one. It has been years ago. But it was one that every time they walked up to the conversation, everybody was like, oh. Was it De Debbie Gallagher? Debbie Gallagher. I just thought of it. Anyway, you want to be miserable? You need to be Debbie Gallagher. Yeah. Just think about that. And when it comes to forgiving people, also, never say you're sorry. You say you're sorry, you might give, you might free someone else. You want to be miserable? Make misery your company. Right? Okay. So, all right, I can have some fun with this, but let's talk about some things that we can. I want, I'm going to reference the Bible, but we got to be careful because the Bible might bring life. And so, just take that with a grain of salt, okay, as I'm talking about this message. So, what are the things? Talk, spending time with God every day. We talk a lot about in Christian circles that in our our lessons, our study, all these things. When we spend time in God's Word, it's a way to kind of reconnect with other. But if you're trying to be miserable, avoid it. Stay away. Why come in here? Why watch messages like this? I know you're probably watching, like, why are you still watching? Why am I watching? I don't know. But you need to consider the misery of not watching while you're watching. Does that help? <laughs> you can think about that. Okay, we also talk about this. We love, I like the song, Count Your Many Blessings, in the one on one. Crystal, thank you, I had that written down. And you were talking about that in the lesson this morning. But you know what? If you want to be miserable, you're going to have to quit counting. Okay? What's the song from uh, Elevation and Maverick we like? Uh, count on one, two, three, your blessings. Um, you're going to have to quit counting. You're going to have to be like anti-math or something. Because you count your blessings and you're going to meditate on them. But if you want to be miserable... If you want to ruin your life, you you got to pretend like the blessings didn't happen. Does that make sense? you got to just act like, keep yourself in isolation. I wrote that note. Oh, because it's a blessing to be around other people. And you have like-minded faith and camaraderie here from the church. 
But if you want to be miserable, when you're frustrated and depressed and down, run off by yourself. That's a surefire way to just, the misery will just escalate. And, oh, I, I got this note too. The girls joke about us in our age, Polly and I, we like to fly a lot. We'll be driving the car and we'll be and they're like, how could you do this? Like, I don't know. I think after a while, I get to the point where quiet is kind of a comfort. But if you're trying to ruin things, always drown out any small voice that might be coming in. Like, you have quiet, meditative time with God, He might speak to you. You might need some instruction that would help you out of your misery. If you're trying to ruin your life, you don't want it. Right? You want to stay in a dark place and you want all the noise you can. Well, surround yourself with noise. So you don't have those quiet times. Okay. Um, I've already talked about church and wanting to do that. Let's, oh, here's a good one. The Bible talks about hiding His Word in your heart so you. We can focus, we can meditate, we can keep ourselves in mindfulness. But if we're trying to be miserable, you don't want to memorize the scripture. You put the scripture in here, it's going to come out when you just when you least expect it. So be careful. If you're trying to be miserable, in the middle of your misery, you might have a Bible verse pop up. And if you memorize very much, it's going to happen a lot. God's going to come to you and be a very helpful present help in time of trouble. If you're trying to ruin your life, you don't want that. You don't want those words to pop up. So think about that. You're going to have to be consciously trying to not do this. It's going to take some effort. If you've been living a Christian life for very much time, it's going to take a while to not think of those positive things as they come up. But if you want to be successful at being miserable, you're going to have to work at these things. Okay, I mentioned this, and Lexi talked about this a little. Um, having a good mentor is a, a positive Christian <coughs> idea. Elijah looked up to Elijah. I mean, there was other people that were biblical reference, so having a mentor to pour in your life. Again, back to my same point. If you're trying to make things miserable, isolation is key. You ever seen how um, a pack of hyenas or whatever will attack and kill off uh, an animal from a... How do they do that? They don't go after the strong one in the pack, do they? What do they do? They'll isolate they'll a weak person isolated by themselves, and they'll hang up on them. You want to be miserable? You want to be the one that's about to get eaten. Feeling eaten is a way, sure, far away to feel miserable. I'm just saying, you know, and I made a note here earlier about taking notes in church. Some people do or don't like to do that. But I would encourage you to take notes on how to be miserable. If you don't normally take notes, at least take notes on this. Like, write these down. You're going to have to think about these things consciously, especially if you've been trying to live life like a Christian. It's just going to take some time. But. Having a good influence, you know, we would say hiding the word in our heart is also something that's going to keep us focused on a regular basis, going back to God's word. Or other Christian uh, books, authors that we think we uh, aspire to look up to, but if you want to make things miserable, be careful. You touch on some of these other things, and you might end up with a bunch of additional information that can help you out of it, dig you out of it a bit. So, okay, so here... I'm going to, let's go to some specific Bible verses. And I want to help you with this, so let's see if we can do this. 2 Peter 3, 18 says, Grow in grace in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Kind of back to the same point. You do that, you're going to grow in your walk with Him. Be careful, that will eradicate some misery in your life. How about another one? Ephesians 3, 17. Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, being, look at this, rooted and grounded in love. You might be able to comprehend with all saints with the breadth and length and height and depth of the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge. You get a hold of that, and you're going to get set free. Be careful, because if you're trying to be miserable, this is the stuff that's going to break you out of that. I mean, look at these scriptures. They're full of life. And if you're trying to be miserable, this is not where you want to go. You need to stay away from this stuff. So keep this in mind. 1 Peter 2 talks about being newborn babes, longing for the pure milk of the word. We got a little kitty cat at home. So my wife will hear me leave without saying. <laughs> First of all, blood, right? But those kitties only want milk right now. Maybe they'll eat a little bit of baby food. Some people go right off and say, I'm going to swallow a full set of steak with a uh, you know, little baby, Riker. If we were with Riker, he can't even hold his head up. If we were like, here, Riker, here's your steak. Cut off the grill and put that in front of him. What's he going to do? You can't even hold it. <laughs> but if we did that, we would jump ahead and stuff that we were like, oh, maybe I'm ready for that. Nope. 
So, when it comes to being miserable, buy what money you can chew. Literally. <laughs> if, you're, if you're talking to states, Phil, right? Many times we get so much on us that we just are overwhelmed. That is a surefire way to help you be miserable. Take on way more of the responsibility than you can handle. Just overwhelm yourself because you will be miserable. Guaranteed. Colossians 3.16 says, Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another, psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. I'm telling you what. Unfortunately, we did a, we, everybody did such a wonderful job of worship that they probably put a damper on my message trying to help us be miserable because <laughs> there was a lot of life that came from those words that we were singing. And that's what he's saying in Colossians. But if you're trying to be just ruin things, you're going to have to be careful being a part of worship service. So I'm just saying, you're going to have to be mindful of things like that. How about Ephesians 4.15? Speaking the truth in love, we're able to grow up in all aspects of him who is the head, even Christ. Truth, love, these are all positive things. We're going to have to be very careful. And I'm going to leave you with this one here. That uh, John 15, 5. I'm the vine, you're the branches. He who abides in me, he bears much fruit. From apart from me, you can do nothing. Back to my isolation point, you live in Christ, you're going to probably do well. So be careful. Isolation is the key if you want to ruin things. If you want to mess it up, you're going to have to do things all around. And I mentioned this, or throwing up your hands and uh, doing stuff that would keep you in that position where you're stuck. So I'm going to do this as I'm kind of bringing things to a close. I want to talk about ruining your future because we're talking about ways in general. We're just going to ruin life. But we've got a road in front of us. And we talked in Sunday school again about kind of where we're going. And, and we talk about purpose a lot in the body of Christ. About where are we and what's our roadmap for life. Because if I'm in Christ, I'm a new creation and stuff looks different going forward. And uh, I wrote this note. Isn't this interesting? I had this. that uh, Talking about, I love optimism with kids. But isn't it funny that as a kid, a young child can be afraid of heights and still tell you they're going to be an astronaut. Yeah. Or uh, a young person can struggle in school and tell you they're going to be a professor. How do kids do that? Where they make that dissociation between their fears, but yet they're still trudging forward into their future. It's because they haven't, what we call, become realistic about things where they don't associate the fear with it. Why? Because someone is still taking care of them. And as an adult, many times, Reality sets in, and we associate things. We get the fear stops us from moving forward. Okay. Well, dwelling on God and Him dwelling in us richly, like I was just mentioning, is a way to kind of bridge that gap so that no longer happens. But go back to my initial premise: be careful because if you're trying to make a mess of things, being rooted and grounded in Christ is going to solidify your future because, in spite of the fear, you're going to be able to press forward. For the mark of the pride of the high calling of God that's in Christ Jesus, regardless. And when Paul talks about leaving aside the shackles and the sin and the things that easily beset us, I press forward. We're about to have the Olympics, right? And we get excited to see who's the fastest, highest, uh, longest, everything. We love that. But there's an excitement and pushing to the next level, pushing beyond the fear, beyond the pain, beyond everything. But if you want to be miserable, you just stay still. You can ask anyone of that to help the athletes. How do you accomplish that by sitting on the chair with the bag of potato chips and the fresh soda? How do you go out there and accomplish the perfect 10 in gymnastics or small miles? How do you do that? And she, I guarantee you she'll say, I sit around and do nothing. I just goof off. I, you know, I don't think it goes together. But if you want to be miserable, if you never want your chance at the Olympics, that's what you got to do. You gotta be full of that stuff that just keeps you held up and bogged down. So, let me give you just a few bullets on really messing up your future. And that's what I'm kind of living with today. One, and I mentioned this with the mention, lack of support. Um, we always had the verse up in our house that it's uh, the Colossians, two are stronger than one, for if one falls, the other can lift them up. Uh, that's a great scripture, but not if you wanna make them you want to mess your future up, don't have people that you can walk together in unison with. Because, again, isolation is an easy way to get killed off by the pack. 
And so, you want to mess with your future? Do it all in isolation? Don't have support? Don't, you know, forsake the assembly of some as, uh, together as the manner of some is. This time of together in unity brings strength. So, again, you got to be careful with that. I touched on unforgiveness, but I want to I want to bring more attention to that now. And, and I know that it's so popular in movies. You, you love it. You see a movie, something happens, and they get the character, they get the camera right in their face, and they're like, you know, it's about the issue that they have angst and they come after revenge for, and they're like, I will never forgive you. You know, and it looks dramatic, and it's part of the movie, and blah, blah, blah. And people are like you then. And if you want to make a mess of your future, you got to have to harbor that unforgiveness with every fiber of your DNA being. Don't let it go. Because it might get you some freedom over what you have, and it might ensure some solidity to your future. But if you want to hang on to that unforgiveness, then you're going to have to do that. Laying hold of, of those things, those promises, letting go might free you up for things that are coming forward for you. So, again, you want to do this for the sake of tomorrow? If you let those forgiveness go, be careful. You might have joy, a people, and full of glory. I'm just trying to give you some vital reference because there's too many promises in this book. And if you're trying to make a mess of things, there's so much there. Out of the other token, a lack of gratitude. You know, we talk about counting your blessings, but also being grateful. Uh, you did that this morning, Dave. You were being grateful about Chris. And any one of us, when we show appreciation and gratitude to others who have been helped to us, we're strengthening, we're emboldening, we might even convince someone else to be positive, and we might be a light and an example and a witness. Remember my comment earlier, you want to be visible, you need to throw shade, not light. you got to be careful. Again, you might, you might make your future better, so be careful. If you're trying to ruin it, don't be grateful. Just be ungrateful, stick in the mud. All that's you. And I could made this note earlier too. That uh, you know, we could say it's better to give than receive. Take. You want to be miserable? Just be a taker. Suck the life out of everything and everyone around you. And just take from. Them. You will be you your future. <laughs> you'll be well on your way to seeing it just nose yeah. down. I'm telling you, trying to help. So, oh, have a critical spirit. Oh, so good if you're trying to ruin things. Having a critical heart or grudge type spirit, you will you'll remain that way and you'll just dwell on it, no doubt. Okay. Failing to recognize today what you might be waiting for. You know, I like the song Beatles sing. I've always liked it. It says, Life is what happens when you're busy making other things. And many times we don't know that the best things in life happen are happening in the middle of what we think is struggle and turmoil. And while we're busy putting off and waiting for this moment over here that's going to finally fix things, we're missing the green grass that's right where we're at. We had our goats yesterday on a we uh, show. And the, those days, I mean, I took instruction from the dumb goat yesterday because here we got it on the collar. And I'm letting it graze a whole field of grass by you, all around me. Tall, lush grass right here. But I tied it up, and you know what it did? It wanted the grass just beyond its reach. So it was straining and pulling over the chair it was tied to, because it wanted that grass 18 inches from where I had it tied, which was completely lush, green. It was really standing in lush, green grass, but it needed that green grass just out of reach. And I even think the, the, the police back with a dumb thing like, you got it right in front of you. Why do you need that over there? But we do it too. No. We real, don't realize the blessing we're standing in instead of looking over there like that's going to fix what I got. So, back to my premise of this message. Always be looking for something else that you'll miss life. That's how to make things miserable. You will ruin your future for sure if you think like that. So take instruction from me. And I, I kind of mentioned this too. Providing for yourself, people that want to just get by living life being a taker, you'll mess up things for your future instead of planning, trying to make yourself better, trying to think ahead, and trying to take steps. 
to want to be where you want to be, where God wants you to be, that might solidify your future. Just living in the moment, not caring, and let everybody take care of you, that's a surefire way to make a mess of things, right? So, quit being so industrious if you want to mess it up. And my last thing, and I do this one I want to touch with probably the most important, is fear. And if you want to make a mess of your future, we've got to give in to fear every chance we get. Every time fear comes up, we just need to assume the worst. We need to assume that it's all going to fall apart. It's never going to work out. We can talk about God being bigger and speaking to the mountain as if it's not there. We can recognize those things in the Bible and think, well, there's so much positivity and promise. But if you want to make a mess, we've got to pretend like none of that happens so that the mountain's always bigger than us and we're always at the bottom and it's always above or whatever else is and there's never any hope. And then you'll stay stuck and you'll just wallow in a new tree for years. And we'll waste lots of time. Oh, even that. I ain't talking about time wasting. Waste time. Just blow it off as if it doesn't matter. Kind of like my girlfriend uh, a minute ago. So, I want to do this. If we want to be shackled and we want to be captive, then we got to get into the fears, the, the things, the things that beset us, the weights. You know, you ever talk about walking around with ankle weights, which likes that story. Feels like you're just always walking in quicksand or mud. That's what we want to feel like in life if we want to make a mess of things and our future correspond to that. But if we want to be free, we want to truly be free. If we want that, that peace that passes all understanding, it's going to come from this. And it's not just because of the book. And it's not just our time together. It's going to come from making this a priority over what we're going through. And I don't want to step on other things. I have another message I'm starting to think through, but it really touched on this point here, which is we got to go to a source for an answer instead of dwelling on the problem if you want to get through. So if you want to make a mess of it, dwell on the problem. If you want through it, we're going to have to focus on the thing that gets you through. And going to God's Word when things are tough is a little bit. Pray with me this morning. Lord, I just thank you for your goodness, your blessings, and all things. Lord, I can have some fun with this and be a little tongue-in-cheek about ruining things. But we know you hold the keys to life and life everlasting. And just like the disciples said, where else are we going to go? Lord, you have the keys to life. There is no other real answer. It's not going to it's not going to take our longings away. It's not going to take away those the struggles and the challenge the things that would hold us fast but those fears those things that would threaten to overtake us you got the answer in the midst of all and we'll praise you we love you we thank you for giving us hope and expectation yes, we love you in jesus name amen